here we are on numbers 15 through 16. So it says, form a polynomial of degree three with the given zeros. Write answer in the form of a standard polynomial. And then they gave me the zeros there. So since it's degree three, I should only have three zeros and they have explicitly told me all three of them. So if this is a zero, then it means x minus that is a factor or in other words, x plus two is a factor and x minus one plus two i is a factor or x minus one minus two i and x minus one minus two i or x minus one plus two i. Now when you're multiplying this out to get it to look like a standard polynomial, you wanna always multiply your imaginary um, factors first. So this one I will leave there for later. And here I'm going to distribute or FOIL out x squared minus 1x plus 2ix here minus x plus 1 minus 2i minus 2ix plus 2i and minus 4i squared. And so if we take a look at what we've got here, we've got positive 2ix, negative 2ix, negative 2i, positive 2i. And so all of the imaginary terms have canceled. The only one I have here left is i squared, but this is really just a negative one by the definition of i squared. So what I have in my parentheses is x squared minus x minus x plus one, and a negative four times a negative one is plus four. So I have x plus two, x squared minus two x plus five. And then I need to finish multiplying this out. So I get x cubed minus two x squared plus five x plus two x squared minus four x plus 10. So if I combine my like terms, I these two terms will cancel. Five minus four is gonna give me a positive one x plus 10. And therefore this is going to be my polynomial. I do have some missing terms, but there is nothing wrong with that. You can choose, well, it tells me to write f of x. So I'm gonna write f of x equals x cubed plus x. Um, and so on and so forth. Oh, I apologize for the plane. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move on to number 16 and 17 and 18. So for all three of these, they want us to determine the domain, the asymptotes, and the intercepts of all these problems. So the domain is always all real numbers, except for wherever the denominator equals zero. So for 16, we'll figure out where does this denominator equal zero. So if I factor this using the AC method, I get negative 72, and I can use eight times nine is negative 72, yeah. So six x squared and a positive eight x, a negative nine x minus 12. And if I factor by grouping, these two guys have a 2x, which leaves me with 3x plus 4 minus 3, positive 3x, and a positive 4. And so then I end up with 3x plus 4, 2x minus 3. So instead of having this um, quadratic equal to 0, we can have its factored form equal to 0. And if I set each factor equal to zero, I can minus four over, and I can add three over, and then divide by three. So I get x equals negative four thirds, and x equals three over two if I divide by two on that side. Um, so then I know that my domain is going to be the set of all x values just so long as x does not equal negative four thirds 
or x does not equal 3 halves. Now, if the choices have the domain in interval notation, um, that would mean from negative infinity to negative 4 thirds, from negative 4 thirds to positive 3 halves, and then from positive 3 halves to infinity. Everything except the negative 4 thirds and the positive 3 halves included. So that's the first part. So the second part is asking me for the asymptotes. We kind of have already found them, because well, half of them. For the vertical asymptotes, you have to figure out where your denominator equals zero. And I already know where that happens. It happens at negative 4 thirds, and it happens at 3 over 2. So half of my asymptotes are already have already been found. The other one is to consider whether you have a horizontal asymptote or an oblique asymptote. And for those, you have to compare the degrees. So I have the degree of my numerator is 2, and the degree of my denominator is also 2. Highest exponent up here is a square, highest exponent down here is a square. Since they have the same degree, that means I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator, which is an imaginary 1, and the leading coefficient of the denominator, which is a 6. So here I have my vertical asymptotes, and I have my horizontal asymptote. The last thing that they want us to find is the intercepts. So for the y-intercept, we just need to plug in 0 for x. So you get 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 8 over 6 times 0 squared minus 0 minus 12. We end up with negative 8 over negative 12, which reduces down to a 2 thirds positive. So my y-intercept will be at 0 for x and 2 thirds for y. Now for the x-intercepts, you only need to set the numerator equal to 0. Okay, not the whole thing, just the numerator equal to zero. The denominator will tell you your asymptotes. The numerator will tell you your x-intercepts. So I'm going to set x squared minus 2x minus 8 equal to zero. And if I can, I want to factor that, and I believe I can factor this. And so then if I set each factor equal to zero, I'm going to add 4 to get positive 4, and here I'm going to minus 2 to get negative 2. So I have two x-intercepts. I have 4 comma 0 and I have negative 2 comma 0. So this is my y-intercept. These are my x-intercepts. Okay, so that's everything I needed for number 16. Now for number 17, um, we're going to do that one just the same. Okay. So here, if I want to find my domain, I have to figure out where does my denominator equal 0. And if I solve this, I can do 8x cubed equal to 27, x cubed equal to 27 over 8, and then take the cube root of 27 over 8, I end up with um, 3 over 2. Okay, so I only have one number to exclude in my domain. So x cannot equal 3 halves. In interval notation, that would be from negative infinity to 3 halves, and then from 3 halves to positive infinity. Now, my vertical asymptote work has also already been done. Since I've already set my denominator equal to 0, I already know that I have a vertical asymptote at 3 halves. Now for the horizontal or oblique asymptote. Well, the degree of the numerator is 2, and the degree of the denominator is 3. Highest exponent up here is 2, highest exponent down here is 3. Since I have the case where the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, my horizontal asymptote is automatically at the equation y equals 0. Now, so I've got my vertical asymptote, I've got my domain, and I've got my horizontal asymptote. The only thing left is the intercepts. So for the y-intercept, we plug in 0. 
4 times 0 squared minus 8 times 0 over 8, 0 cubed minus 27. I end up with 0 over negative 27, which is just 0. So the y-intercept is actually 0, 0. Now for the x-intercept, this is where you set the numerator equal to 0. And so if I can factor that, I want to try to factor that. I can factor out a 4x, which would leave me with x minus 2. And if I set each of these factors equal to 0, I'll get x equals 0 and x equals 2. Now 0 and 0 has already been included with the y-intercept. But I also have 2, 0. So that is another intercept. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for number 18. So um, again, domain, taking your denominator and equaling it to zero. This I can factor um, plus one and minus four. Yeah, that'll work. So then I get x equal to negative one, x equal to positive four. So my domain will equal all x's as long as x does not equal negative one and x does not equal four. I also have my vertical asymptotes, which are gonna be x equals of 1 and x equals 4. My horizontal or oblique asymptotes are going to be dependent upon my degree. So the degree of my numerator is equal to 3 and the degree of my denominator is equal to 2. When the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, you either have two situations. One, if the numerator is greater by, by just one, so this one is just one more than that one. Then you have an oblique asymptote. But if this number were larger than the bottom degree, by more than one. So let's say this is two, and let's say this was four or five or six or seven. Then there would be no horizontal asymptote or oblique asymptote, okay? So then I need to find the equation to that oblique asymptote. And the way you do that is by long division. So I'm going to take the bottom and divide it into the numerator. And let's see what we get. So x squared times 2x will give me 2x cubed. And then I distribute here. So I get 2x cubed. And then I get minus 6x squared. And then I get minus 8x. And then in order to compare these, I have to subtract. So the new sign is a negative. This one will turn positive, and this one will turn positive. So these will cancel. Negative x squared plus 6x squared will be 5x squared. Negative 15x plus 8x will be negative 7x. Then I'll keep going. So what times x squared will give me 5x squared? A positive 5. I can distribute that positive 5. So I get positive 5x squared. I get negative 15x and I get a negative 20. Again, to subtract, I'm going to have to change these signs here. And so then that will cancel. I'll end up with a positive 8x and a positive 20. Now, without getting into fractions, there's no number that will multiply times x squared to give me an x. So I'm done. My oblique asymptote is going to be at the equation y equals 2x plus 5. You ignore the remainder. You just want the quotient up at the top, okay? Now, I still need to figure out what my y-intercept is. So I'm going to plug in 0, 2, 0 cubed, minus 0 squared, minus 15 times 0, over 0 squared, minus 3 times 0, minus 4. You end up with 0 over negative 4, which is just 0. So the y-intercept is 0, comma, 0. Uh, just trying to box some of my answers here. Now the x-intercept, again, comes from the numerator. So we're going to take our numerator and equal it to 0. So the first thing I want to do is factor out what they have in common. And then go ahead and try to factor um, the rest of it. Now you can do AC method, um, but I think I'm just going to quickly factor this since we've already had um, 
some examples with AC methods. So three and five, I would put the three here and the five there, which will give me six and five. The six should be negative, the five should be positive. So 2x squared, negative 6x, positive 5x will give me negative x, positive 5, negative 3 will give me negative 15. So then if I set each of these factors equal to 0, I get x equal to 0. I'll have to minus 5 and then divide by 2. So I get x equals negative 5 halves. And here I would have to add 3. And so I get 3. 0, 0 is already included in the y-intercept. And then here I get negative 5 halves and 0, and here I get 3 and 0. And so those are going to be all of my intercepts. So I have 0, 0, negative 5 halves and 0, and then 3 and 0. Now I really did not give myself a lot of space on these problems. If I had worked them out beforehand, I would have probably anticipated needing a little bit more space just to make this nice and a little bit neater. Okay.